All right, welcome to uh, what's new in uh, 2024. Um, presented by Vinzero, uh, Think Future. Vinzero fosters innovation through delivering software and hardware solutions, consulting, training, development, and managed services. Uh, we have become a trusted uh, technology advisor to our customers through the breadth and depth of our service offering and technical expertise. A commercial flexibility and high level of customer service and understanding. So, uh, hello, all the engineers, drafties, techs, uh, enthusiasts, and the rest of the world. Uh, welcome to Vinzero Autodesk uh, Inventor What's New 2024 webinar. Um, just a quick intro. Uh, my name is Nick Wilkin. Um, I'll be presenting this webinar. Um, as you can see by the next slide, um, some of my experiences and my basic bio. Just a quick introduction to myself and then we'll, we'll get on with it. Nothing too much to bore you. Uh, an example of uh, the highlights in my career would be working on uh, a power station's Medjuba um, in South Africa. Tandem coal tripler, the picture on the bottom right. Really big piece of equipment weighing over 200 tons easily. Um, and on the bottom left is the Roy Falk, which has got the right up there. All right, but enough about me, uh, let's get started. Right, so uh, Autodesk uh, Vinzero have created communities and this slide illustrates the value Inventor gets for all the feedback or from all the feedback uh, uh, from users like, uh, like you around the world. Um, as you can see over the years, they've, they've taken your feedback and actually put it into practice and put it into the program so keep sending those ideas, guys. Join the communities if you haven't, um, and look at the forums and so on. All right, very powerful stuff, and one of the better one of the better aspects of the the Autodesk uh, community. Always willing to take uh, notes and learn and advance. All right, um, today's webinar. Uh, just to go over quickly, we've got eight modules that we're basically going to be looking at, eight areas that they've improved. Um, there's general um, enhancements. So just a quick overview of what's going to be covered today with this uh, with this what's news uh, what's new webinar. Uh, general enhancements, exploring uh, enhancements for viewing your design and rendering creation. Uh, selection uh, view definitions persist in the design view representation. All right. Then we'll move on to part modeling. Um, we can see improvements to sheet metal creation for closed loop sketch geometry. Um, the mark feature continues to see upgrades uh, for more complex geometry. In your assembly modeling, a new oriented minimum bounding box option is added to the, uh, to the options tab of derived parts, derived assembly, and make part dialogues. Um, additional options are available, patterning features and components. There's a new finish feature. Um, so not just using colors anymore on your parts. Um, now you can actually have a material finish and a paint spec, if you will. So capture manufacturing processes with a, the new finish feature by combining appearances uh, data with properties to describe document real world processes. Uh, pretty nice stuff. Uh, I, I, I really like that feature. 3D annotations, create and edit weld and sub weld symbols in a part or assembly model, not just in your drawing sheet anymore. All right, then within the drawings, they've added a sketch-based revision cloud to your drawings. Um, this is not now um, third-party uh, cloud that you have to install in Inventor after, after you've installed the program. It is now one of the base commands. They are easy to, uh, easy to edit, and you'll find formatting options available in the style editor. They've also included a edge symbol, based on the ISO standard. Right, Cuban pipe has, has, has a new style which supports the use of custom elbows. So custom elbows, in other words, any angle you want for that custom elbow doesn't just need to be 45 degree or 90 degrees anymore. And then you can apply these custom angles to rigid pipe rows, which is fantastic. Then there's a, uh, we're just gonna touch on interoperability. And you can send your inventor models to Fusion 360, uh, 360 for manual inspection tasks. Uh, the UCS supports uh, for importing uh, JT and STEP files. 
All right, so let's first look at the general uh, enhancements uh, and getting started with the, the actual enhancements and what's, what's been added this year. There is uh, graphics enhancements. So section view definitions persists in the design view representations. With this release, you can easily edit the section view definition or suppress the section view by right-clicking the view representation node and clicking selection view edit or suppress. Previously, you could only access section views using the context menu command, which required unnecessary clicks. Now the section view command and options are added directly to the mini toolbar in the graphics window. Control section views, uh, end cap preview during section view plane dragging. All right, end cap visibility is set by default to display. End caps for section geometry when the, the part count is less than 500 parts or equal to 500 parts. If the part count is more than 500 parts, the end caps will not display. You can override the setting by selecting or deselecting the options in the mini toolbar. All right, the render size limit has been removed. So Inventor Studio has in previous releases limited, uh, limited the user to a 4K rendering output. This limitation has been removed and Inventor Studios will render images up to 16K resolution. Uh, just note that this will depend on what your GPU hardware or your or your PC setup is. Um, is. So just, just, be, just check that. All right. Custom environment image support, the, the workflow for using custom um, HDR and X, uh, EXR images with IBL lighting styles is much improved and is supported for both CPU and GPU ray tracing. Uh, basically in layman's terms, it makes things a lot prettier. All right, you're gonna get a, a lot better images out of your environment environment if that is something that you use in your workflow or in your uh, industry. The support for IBL backgrounds. So GPU ray tracing now supports rendering with IBL backgrounds. In other words, you can now bring in your own um, backgrounds and you, it, 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 it is supported by Inventor. Okay, some, some more general enhancements. Um, it is now possible to set perspectives with author faces as the default view setting in both document settings and application options. Um, so to access it, you would then go to application options, display tab, appearance, settings, display appearance, dialog, initial display appearance and projection. Um, in an open modeling document, you would uh, go obviously to the document settings, standard tab, display appearance settings, initial display appearance and projection. All right, so uh, a little bit of a, a feature there as far as your projection is concerned. Uh, the J key is now assigned as the shortcut key to start the place joint command. So that wasn't available before. Now you can shortcut with uh, the joints by using the J key. Um, this apparently works not just in Inventor, but it works in some of the other features as well. So the more advanced side um, being things like uh, Netstrap. All right. So Within the uh, general enhancements, it's easy to identify parts or assemblies that are substitute components, uh, substitute status. Whenever a part or assembly is created as a substitute, using derive, uh, derive or simplify, the resulting component is given the substitute, substitute status. The substitute status displays in the component context menu. This change affects part documents. Even in a new part document, the context menu displays the read-only substitute status. It is unchecked if you are not familiar with the substitute. Um, look it up. Uh, go, go to Autodesk, guys, and look up Create a Simplified Part if you're not familiar with it. Right, the guide tutorials um, have been updated uh, to use new interactive elements delivered with the home experience. So if you, if, if you open your 2024, you'll notice that your home experience has a, a little bit more interactive elements uh, uh, with, within that, uh, within that uh, field. All right, so um, there's a couple of uh, 
performance enhancements, uh, the punch pattern uh, compute, uh, whole pattern compute, uh, vault checking with large files that include any CAD references, um, and, and more. All right, so just going to go to a quick video now, and I will just uh, I will just explain what's happening. So let me just do a quick demo of these enhancements. All right, so so in the application options, all right, it is now possible to set perspectives with ortho faces as the default display appearance. Autodesk also improves the sectional uh, view tool to add an end cap toggle. This helps you see more clearly which sort of items the, the view is directly cutting through. Another cool feature is the ability to rotate a sectional view. So you obviously cut the plane and you can rotate it. Uh, you can click the toggle button in the middle of the toolbar and then use uh, using the canvas overlay to rotate the cut. This is also supported in quarter and three quarter sections. They've made it much easier to create your own RBL environment. So simply create a new style, click upload image, and then select the HDR image you want to use. And if you prefer to use Inventor Studios for your rendering, uh, they've increased the maximum render resolution to 16K. So you can really increase your image uh, resolution. Right, uh, part modeling enhancements. They improve profile detection uh, in the sheet metal environment, basically in your sketch environment. So when specifying a face in sheet metal, closed loop detection is now improved to make it easier to select geometry from a sketch, especially in situations where multiple pro profiles are overlapping. So this is a pretty sweet um, um, enhancement and yeah, uh, something to test out. Let's go through that video. Uh, the parameters window has two new um, improvements in the Inventors 2022. The parameters window extends export functionality to text and Boolean parameters in the user parameters section. Oh, sorry, guys. So I'm actually going through the sketch here. This allows us to access parameters in other places, such as, uh, sorry, guys, I've got the wrong area. But this is the, um, the sketch um, command. It's, it's pretty sweet. And yeah, uh, I've actually practiced with that a bit. But uh, yeah, very, uh, very much easier to, uh, to select your sketches. And if you have overlapping sketches, it, it detects the different sketches a lot easier. All right, so parameters windows. The uh, the parameters windows uh, is an export Boolean parameters to a custom I property. It is now possible to export both text and Boolean uh, values from the parameters dialog to custom I properties. Uh, these can then be retrieved, for example, in the drawing environment or 3D annotation. The text and Boolean parameters can also be exported when using the, the derived function. Hardness is a brand new feature uh, unit, um, and it's been added to this inventor release. This allows hardness to be specified in the finish command. Um, I'll show you the finish command uh, closer to uh, in, in a little bit, uh, but it can also be used on its own finish command. Um, so this, following this, uh, allow uh, of, it's available to add this to your parameters, and it's available in different units such as uh, Brunel, uh, Noop, Rockwell. 
uh, Vickers. So you have all those options available as an actual unit type. All right, then there's a new mark feature. Um, the mark feature is improved to support the using of non coplanius um, sketches to define the work sketch geometry, wrapping or protecting the sketches to a non planar face. Right, and I think that is the video that I showed you previously. Let's jump back there and have a look. Definitely. All right, so this is the mark feature introduced in Inventor 2023, uh, 2024, sorry. This allows you to laser etch or mark paths. Um, Autodesk now uh, improved that in 2024 by adding a behavior se uh, section to the property panel. In addition, being able to etch in three different directions, there is now two different marking methods um, included. Uh, you can uh, protect will apply the, the mark across all faces in an even path. And even if they are not co planar This is uh, the ability to wrap the mark. Uh, this allows the mark to wrap around corners or to be applied to the curved geometry. Right, assembly modeling enhancement. So you have some of the assembly modeling enhancements. The orientated minimum bounding box, you can derive a solid body as an, uh, an orient oriented minimum bounding box. A new oriented minimum bounding box uh, option is added to the options tab of the derived part, uh, derived assembly, and make part dialog. By default, the option is checked. Um, uncheck the box to derive a body as the orthogonal bounding box. All right, there's a rectangular pattern uh, improvements. You, you can now select a revolved face, cylindrical or co conical, to define the direction for a component pattern. Uh, the pattern component command uses the face axis to define the pattern direction. Use the standard uh, controls to flip the direction. Um, it is not necessarily to activate the, the selector when using an origin axis. Picking the flight activates the selector and chooses the selected axis. The direction selection does not change with the activation of the selector. You must also select a new direction. Uh, circular patterns for components um, has been uh, enhanced to provide incremental and fitted positioning methods. All right, there's some content center enhancements. Uh, with this release, it is now possible to map red direction, left or right, in other words, uh, to the part template parameters. Using the content center editor, add a new column into the content center family table, fill in the desired thread properties defining the thread direction, and map this column to the family template thread direction available in family properties. Um, that'll be under template parameters and the part template parameters. All right, um, a little demo of the oriented minimum bounding box. So let's take a look at the oriented minimum bounding box. Uh, these are two identical cubes, except one of them has been drawn at a 45 degree angle. If we apply a standard bounding box to them both, uh, the green cube takes up more space than the blue cube, as you can see. This is because the envelope is drawn in relation to the origin of the part. If we use the new orientated minimum bounding box settings, we can see that the green cube now gets a rotated envelope that more accurately represents how uh, much space it occupies. Let's look at this in some more realistic assemblies. This new workflow is also supported within Simplify. When using a standard orthogonal bounding box, these, these parts look like they're occupying a lot of space. With the oriented minimum bounding box, intellectual uh, property can be removed whilst also giving a more accurate representation of the space required. 
Uh, let's use a, another real world example. If uh, if a standard bounding box supply to this linkage, we would need a shipping crate that is 1.6 by 1.5 meters. However, switching to an oriented minimum bounding box, um, you need to uh, create a third of that size, 1.6 by 440, 450. Note that when creating a single bounding box, the dimensions of the area will be pushed through to the parameters window and used in the drawing and can be used in the drawing environment. All right, so there is a new finish feature. This new finish feature is pretty sweet. Um, and let's uh, have a look at it. The new finish feature enables you to not only specify the appearance of your parts, components, and assemblies, but also the manufacturing process, such as material coating or surface finish. Um, all applied finishes are listed in a new finish folder in the browser. You can reorder the finishes in the browser node, suppress, rename, or delete them. Um, these also uh, follow your creation uh, method. In other words, your whenever you create these parts, they are listed according to when you created them and how you created them, as would normally be with your browser when creating parts. In drawings, a new uh, parameters finish type category is added to the leader text and the format text dialog to enable finish information to be used in drawing notes. These parameters will automatically be updated if changed in the modeling environment. This enhances your drawing by adding additional manufacturing process information to the documentation. Each finish feature setting has a parameter with corresponding unique names in the finish parameters. Uh, categories in the parameters dialog. Um, all finished parameters uh, can be exported. Exported parameters are displayed in eye properties. Uh, and note that um, change in eye properties doesn't affect the model finish feature parameters. Uh, the finish feature can be captured in model states, eye parts, and eye assemblies. Pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Um, really nice new feature. All right, just some more um, areas uh, with regard to the finish feature. You've got your appearance. This is the different types of finishes. Uh, you've got appearance, which is obviously just the color. You've got material coating. Um, so basically like uh, electroplating, those type of treatments. You've got heat treatment. In other words, if you're going to um, have a forged part or something to that effect and you need it to be um, uh, heat treated. All right, then you've got surface texture. So grinding or a stock removal process, that type of thing. And then you've got painting. So you can have a prime. So this enables you to actually put a primer and a base coat and a top coat, if you, if you will. You can add as many um, finished features as you need to. So in other words, you could actually add a material coating. Um, let's say uh, a um, zinc coat as it's displayed here, or, or an anodized coating, whichever one you choose for your material. Then you could add a surface texture to it. That would possibly be before then. So you could grind the surface. Then you would add your, your material coating. You would possibly heat treat it before, then grind it then material coated, et cetera, et cetera, you, whichever the process is in your industry. And then you could paint it. And any of the orders you can pick and you can actually move them up or down your hierarchy in your browser. So these features are pretty sweet. All right, so how does this all work and how does it come together? All right, so appearances are a great way to color our parts. Uh, but they don't give us information about the manufactured product. product. Uh, with the new finished feature, appearances can be combined with data to add to the manufacturing process. We can now apply material coatings, uh, heat treatment, surface textures, uh, colors, and paint. All right, uh, as I showed you guys. As usual, uh, the feature can be renamed at the top and in this demo, we will be adding a heat treatment. A drop down allows you to choose a specific process. This could be case hardened, for instance, and then attached an appearance to it. Descriptions can be added. And then, of course, uh, the hardness, which is a brand new type of unit for Inventor um, 2024 and supports many different units, such as Brindle, Vickers, and Rockwell. Uh, then select the face to apply the finish to. All right, so you'll select the face there at the end. 
In the browser, there is a new folder uh, created called finishes where we will see a list of all finishes applied to this part. This means we get an overview of the processes required for this part. And if we hover over the finish, it will highlight the area and the part that is applied to. Model states support the finish tool as well. Adding a second model state, um, you can then, we will now add a paint. And if we add a paint, it's a uh, pick powder coat, uh, spray, roller, or any other method. Um, you pick the appearance, then you enter the description to, uh, to be used later in the drawing or 3D annotation. The paint thickness can also be specified. And that's the base code for this plate. So we'll add that to the comments. Or not, let's just pick the point. And you can then see that the color changes. And this couldn't be done uh, with your standard appearance method. Okay, let's apply the final coat and we will add some notes. Pick the face to apply it. You'll notice that when we click OK, the blue paint will override the primer in the graphics area. And that is because the finishes respect the browser order. So the finish at the bottom will always be the one that is visible, something to note. Uh, this is easy controlled by your model states. So you can obviously adjust your model states accordingly, and you can suppress or unsuppress any given uh, um, finishes you have there in your model space. So these finish commands are also accessible from the parameters window. So we could use the values in here to calculate how much paint we need for an entire frame, um, et cetera. And in the drawing environment or model-based definition, we can retrieve the finish information. Um, a new type of category is uh, available in leaders or general text boxes, allows you to choose any of the finish manufacturing information, allowing you to be automatically updated whenever a change is made in your model. Um, you can also stack these together as, as is displayed here um, in your notes. All right, some 3D annotation enhancements. So uh, 3D envelope requirement modifier. The envelope requirement modifier is now available for whole notes and dimensions. In the annotation preview, uh, you would then click on a dimension and in the toolbar select the envelope modifier. Annotation scale. In this release, one in five scale is added to the annotation scale dropdown. Uh, and this is um, per DIN uh, EN ISO and ISO. Okay, and all over modifier uh, has been added to the uh, tolerance option. Okay, 3D uh, thread notes. So thread notes now highlight all faces related to the thread feature. And the datum target browser node. The datum target browser node now displays the target size when using the extended name option. All right, so model based definitions. This is basically for 3D annotation. Um, they've added a few enhancements to the 3D annotation environment. When applying a linear dimension, it can now be specified as an envelope requirement. The annotation scales uh, include one is to five. While annotating the profile of a surface, it was previously possible to specify all around. Now all over is also available to note op to the note options. Uh, and finally, in the drawing environment, the ability to extract uh, 3D annotations from a part is an assembly file uh, in an assembly file simply by switching to the 3D annotation tab and selecting the force. Right, 3D weld symbols. 3D weld symbols are now available as one of the 3D annotation types. Um, this is a pretty nice feature as well. Um, it, it, it wasn't um, available before, 
create and edit weld sub and weld sub symbols um, in the part or assembly model. Then retrieve the associative symbols in the drawings. So your 3D weld symbols are included uh, in exports to 3D PDF, DWF, and shared views. Um, so you can actually export these um, into different uh, files like zip files, and you will be able to um, share that with uh, with other with other parties. So on the annotation ribbon, a ribbon, there is now a welding symbol option to allow you to add symbol uh, information to your designs. Um, the, the, the dialogue is almost identical to the drawing environment, um, allowing you to add weld symbols into the 3D environment. So um, then, yes, we can bring these notes through into the drawing environment. Um, so you can add these symbols within the 3D environment. Um, uh, this is also uh, available uh, in Weldements. It's not just available in Weldements, but it's also available in your parts, all right? But uh, we don't have to use a weld. Uh, we, do, we don't have to use the actual weld symbol to create this. We can bring those parts uh, in from the part file. But exporting, uh, you can also do this, sorry, in your um, in your solid bodies. So multi-part bodies, you can you can add symbols as well as assemblies, as well as weldments. So multi-body parts, as well as weldments and assemblies. And remember, you can export these to other CAD files, um, QIF or STEP, um, and you can share this information with other people. All right, drawing enhancements. Uh, so this is now your sheet properties. In other words, your drawing enhancements to your sheet drawings. Uh, sheet properties, sheet name is added as a sheet property and can be used in text. All right, so there you can see the drop down sheet properties, current drawing standard, and there is a, a, a sheet name. It's now easier to recognize if a filter is applied to the parts list, an icon in the browser, and the parts list dialog displays a filter symbol when one is applied. So it will show you that this is a um, filtered parts list. Uh, drawing enhancements, uh, a change was made to the breakout line object type for ISO standards. Until now, the visible layer on thickness was set to 0 0.5 millimeters. Now, as per the updated uh, standard, the breakout line object type uses the breakout line layer by default with a thickness of 0 0.25 millimeters. This also applies to the DIN GB JIS standards. In other words, the, the German, the British, and the Japanese standard. Right, many 2D weld symbols in drawings were updated as per ISO, uh, BIS, DIN, and GB standards. The newly introduced uh, 3D weld symbol uses ISO, DIN, and ANSI standards. The changes include updating the names of fields and adding new fields depending on the selected weld type. The changes were made to square butt welds, fillet welds, or plug welds, for example. Okay, with this release, color scheme settings can be set for drawing sketch elements. Until now, it was difficult to work with elements if their color conflicted with the sheet color setting. The new sketch options under the drafting heading allows the color of sketch elements to be set for the drawing environment. All right, um, yeah, I always had, used to struggle to find that area, um, but now, and uh, I always thought, why can't this happen? But it's now um, included, which is great. Revision clouds, all right, revision clouds, um, as, I, as I described in the right at the beginning, revision clouds are fully fledged inventor objects now and no longer in the software dev kit. So you don't have to install it as basically as an add-on. This is now part of the inventor drawing environment, which is fantastic. All right, so let's have a look at those revision clouds. Um, let's go over here. Uh, in an annotation tab, rev panel. So 
is it uh, playing? Yeah, it is. In the annotation tab, rev panel, we can add a cloud by selecting your bounding area. Uh, we can add them to drawing sheets or views, move them around, add or delete vertices. Uh, Bean sketch plates that can be edited in either their cloud state or from the sketch. And like other annotation styles from formatting, managed using the styles editor. So your revision cloud is part of the drawing sheet. And in the styles editor here, we can actually go and find revision clouds and you can change their settings as you would need them to be. You can add a rev tag and it can be linked to your table. All right, starting from this release of Inventor, you can define an edge symbol based on ISO 13715, 2019. That's standard. The new edge symbol command is added to the symbols panel of the annotate tab. The edge symbol style is added to the drawing style and standard editor. All right, so how does this edge symbol work? Uh, the edge symbol command, uh, this is a brand new annotation symbol for the drawing environment. Uh, various positions can be chosen from. So you're gonna add it as you would any other symbol or leader. And values can be directly added to the symbol images. Options such as value range, um, all around and multiple faces modified. General notes can be created by, if you wanted to add a general note, not by just adding these uh, uh, to a specific face. All right, so there's obviously multiple options available. Um, you can also add a general note um, and it can be added by clicking outside the view on the sheet. This will display a general indication error. Uh, giving us further types of uh, selections. Uh, there is also a convenient function to add to the uh, added uh, with a plus and minus symbol. Even pipe. All right, so custom elbows. In previous versions of Inventor, it was only possible to add 45 or 90 degree elbows to a rigid pipe run. Uh, starting from this release, it is now possible to apply custom angled elbows. When a style with custom elbows is activated, select the custom elbow options uh, in the root dialog and either use the curved arrow manipulator or type the value to, to angle the elbows relative to the current position. All right, uh, when dragged to, to other than 45 or 90 degrees, um, the root will populate with these custom elbows and it will display in your bomb as a, a custom ang um, elbow with a specific angle defined. Uh, the new custom elbow styles, which support the use of custom elbows, um, are available in the tube and uh, styles dialog. All right, so the Cuban, uh, the new feature for Cuban Pipe, custom elbows. Um, you can edit styles to have custom elbows. So you'd obviously go into your style, into your general, and you would edit the styles. You can see that there's only 90 and 45s. But now you can snap to any angle requirement and you can add that angle as you would need. There's the custom elbow, and you can select any angle you would need within the tube and pipe environment. As you can see, it is uh, far easier to create custom elbows now.
You can also type in the angle and this will show in the bomb and the angle will be displayed. Um, if you, you can select custom hours and you can highlight them as you would in, uh, in your um, styles, you could uh, change the custom elbows appearance to be different from the rest of the elbows. Thus highlighting where a custom elbow needs to be created. A great tool for on site. Okay, interoperability enhancements. Uh, UCS support, both uh, JT and STEP support the option to include UCS on import. Um, object input, OBJ, performance when opening OBJ files has been improved. Solid Edge support for reading Solid Edge 2023 is added. Uh, Parasolid, uh, support for importing and exporting Parasolid version 35 is added. All right, so, and there is an inventor fusion interoperability. You can now send pass directly into Fusion 360 for inspection environment. All right, so what you're able to do there is you can, um, you can send the part using fusion interoperability. Sorry, let me get back to the video here. You are able to send the part directly into Fusion from Inventor using the free, uh, Fusion 360 tab. You can create an inspection environment within Fusion 360 or uh, uh, create an inspection plan. And directly from Inventor, you can upload that, upload that to Fusion 360. And you can then go with your inspection plan. You can create an inspection report. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier to do that in 2024. There is an access to manual inspection added to Fusion 360. From within Inventor, you can send a part, an IPT file to Fusion 360 and create manual inspection tasks. So Fusion um, exports workflow. If a change has occurred in the invariant model state or design view used for Fusion 360 exports, you can click open in Fusion 360. In the exp export context menu, you are notified that the Inventor model and Fusion 360 model are out of sync and are given the option to update the Fusion 360 model before opening it. All right, as you can see, um, just updating the inventor model. And creating an inspection plan.
Right. All right, so the inventive community resources. Um, there's a great inventive feedback community. All right, um, inventor ideas, inventor blog, inventor LinkedIn community, and inventor university. Your feedback about, about inventor is vital, guys. Um, share your feedback and product improvement requests with uh, the inventor team at Autodesk. Um, send it to, to Vin02. And please join, uh, join in in following the communities because that's where all these improvements come from. Um, for example, the adding the cloud, um, the, the revision cloud in the drawing sheets that was that was decades in the making. So, um, but your guys' feedback is uh, it's really um, valuable. So please do that. All right. So we are going to jump into some some Q and A's. I'm going to have a look here and just see if there are any questions. Uh, so I'll jump into the Q&As. Um, I don't have time for a lot of Q&As, but, um, but maybe if there are any, I will, I will answer any. If you guys uh, don't have any questions now, but you have them later, feel free to go to our website, the VinZero um, website. All right, you can, you can come over here to the info at a2ktechnologies.com.au. And you can ask any questions, and we will we will get back to you for sure. All right. So we have some some really uh, experienced guys uh, using Inventor, and we are in contact with Autodesk to help you out with those queries. Please visit the site um, anzvenzero.com events uh, to view our upcoming webinars. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, see you later.